Hello everybody, welcome to the preview of the Blood Bowl 3 Season Finals. You can see the draw up there, it's uh, pretty cool, it's a uh, double elimination, so this is just the winner's bracket on the screen, but uh, the loser's bracket is just the same, so like the same pairings, so you know, Hiru versus Smilzo, the winner of that will play the winner of Crystal Hunter in Aryan, and the loser, you know, the same way. So, and then they will all come through a mirrored, a mirrored loser's bracket. So, um, you know, and obviously I'll cover each round and everything as well uh, as replays and stuff. Some of them live, some replays, because some will be hard scheduled on the official cast. And some will just be allowed a little bit of flexibility. Um, the official cast will be on the cons Twitch and uh, I will be one of the official casters. So that's very nice with uh, Adam Savage and Andy Davo. Not that Adam Savage, if you're wondering, <laughs> he's an esports guy. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, so we'll we'll have a look at all of the teams here, and uh, and you know a bit of predictions. So first up, we've got Hiru and his dwarves. He came through winning every game. He's got a pretty standard dwarf team. He's got four guard, a mighty blow, and a block. But he hasn't got a mighty blow tackle, and he's got two troll slayers. So it's a an only one runner, and he's so he's therefore he's had to block the runner. It's an interesting team. It's you know it's fine. It's dwarves. the The problem with dwarves is you know they've they've got they've got decent matchups versus a lot of teams, especially underworld, which are like the best team. But they do struggle versus lizard men, and he has got the worst possible matchup in the first round. He's got Smilzo or Smilzo, I don't really know. And uh, yeah, he's got lizard men, four block lizards, absolutely brutal. Twelve players, two rerolls. So he's gone without root and apothecary. Um, yeah, real, real tough game for Hiru. Um, absolute nightmare getting lizards in the first round. Uh, then match two is Crystal Hunter versus Inarian. So we can see here Crystal Hunter's team. He's gone with Skaven. He's not very familiar with Naf style, but he's gone, you know, Skaven because that's what he plays on ladder. Kind of standard, right? Block, wrestle, gutters, tackle, guard, blitzers, jugs, roger. Three rerolls, twelve players. Zappo, you know, it, it's fine, right? There's, it's not too, it's not too amazing, but it's, uh, it'll do the job for sure. Um, and he's got a pretty good draw for him. And funnily enough, this is this is interesting. He's up against Inarion, who got through by beating Olivier Dulac from the winners bracket. Uh, Inarion's gone through the losers bracket after losing Andy Devo, who's also qualified for the top sixteen. And uh, yeah, so he's basically he's already beaten basically the same team as Chunter, played with the same style as Chunter, so he, he had to get pretty lucky though. I'm not sure he'll get that lucky again. He's got five block, he's got a couple of tackle. He obviously thought he was going to struggle the most against agility teams, so went more tackle. And he's got a sneaky git goblin, and he's got a 14-man roster. I really like that he's gone 14 men, no apple. Three re-rolls. So yeah, um, you know, Inarin's good at blood ball. But this is a real tough, real tough matchup for the Black Orcs, and I imagine, I imagine Crystal Hunter will be able to win that. Um, next up, another one of the winners brackets, one of the winners bracket, like the play-in winners bracket. It is Elliot. I think Elliot is probably the best coach in the tournament and definitely has the best team. He's got a sidestep two heads gutter. For the one turn, he's got a guard troll. He didn't go with a juggernaut, and the reason the reason he didn't go with a juggernaut rat ogre is because by dropping the rat ogre down to a troll, he does get five re rolls. So that's I mean that's a crazy amount of re rolls. And he's got a the extra arm scaven thrower to help with the one turn. A huge single point of failure is failing the pickup on the one turn. He's got a mighty blow blitzer to try and get lucky with removals. He's maxed out snotlings for maximum swarming value, one turning potential, you know. And he's he's I think he's played the best of what we've seen, and uh, you know I, I think it's the best team, and I I'm, I'm backing Elliot to win it all. But he's got a bit of a tricky matchup in the first round. Diamed, who was top of the ladder for most of the season, and won all of his play-in matches. He's got an, just a normal orc team, not black orcs or anything. He's got four guard biggins. That's hilarious because we covered one of his matches and and Elliot just talked about guard biggins for the whole for the whole game and then he's he's up against four guard biggins that that'll be hilarious. Uh, Mighty blow blitz or tackle blitz. I really don't like this split, but it's better if you don't have a troll, which he doesn't. He's gone for twelve players and apple on three rerolls. Um, so yeah, I I think I quite like this orc build. 
Maybe I like this orc build the most, honestly. Um, it's tough though, right? Because maybe guard blitzers are better, so you've got a mobile one. Maybe one guard blitzer. Maybe one block big un. I don't know. It's tough, right? Orcs get a lot of toys, and it's but like, well, they don't get enough. So you've, you've got to constantly make that judgment between more guard, more block, uh, more utility, the, the tackle or frenzy. Frenzy, I think, is a strong option, honestly. Um, but he just went with Oz. So, I mean, I'm picking Eliod, but it's going to be a very close run thing. And then the next match, we've got Crucifer versus Moomin Slayer. Now, everybody from Blood Bowl 2 will know Crucifer, absolute legend of CCL with Chorfs. Now he's doing it with Imperial Nobility, and I love the build. He's just maxed out guard, six guard players. He spent a double on one, four blockers, and the uh, Ogre. He's got two blodgers. He hasn't bothered with a tackler. He's just, you know, maximizing threats rather than answers. And a leader thrower to bring it to three rerolls, 13 players. The no Apo has been a bit dodgy for him in some games, right? He really would have loved to an Apo player in a lot of games, but you stretch with the thing. I think the package really helped all uh, Imperial Nobility. The problem is Imperial Nobility aren't that good. Um, just a team of playing Blood Bowl, but they've got so many skills. And Cruz is so good. He's going to be a force to be reckoned with. And uh, he he uh, advanced through the losers bracket, and then he's up against Moomin Slayer, who also advanced through the losers bracket. And uh, in fact, I've got a feeling Moomin Slayer. Okay, no, it, he lost to Diamed. He didn't. I, 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 Cruz did beat an underworld player on his way through. I thought for a second it was Moomin Slayer. It wasn't. Um, so here we are. This is. Moomin Slayer, he's gone a sidestep, got to run it as a nod to the one turn, and then he's protected his players. A couple of blocks, a couple of wrestles. Juggernaut Rat Ogre helps with the one turn. Tackle Blitzer to hit like other things. Only four snot, five, no, five snotlings, so he hasn't gone max, four re rolls. And th this is the thing you see. If you, if you go max snotlings, you just end up with loads of assistant coaches and cheerleaders, which is why Elliot dropped the Roger down. The Rogers generally. Re preferred the rat ogre with juggernaut to help with a one turn um it's interesting i think moomin slayer is one of the people who wasn't very experienced with underworld and just took them because they're the best team and the problem with that is the familiarity does matter a lot with the team and comfort comfort level and optimization and i think a lot of people have picked underworld because they're the best and have struggled you know <laughs> look they've still qualified this you know he's still qualified he's in the mix but uh I think maybe he should have, uh, you know, gone with a, a race he was more familiar with. But he, he primarily loves ogres, so you know, he just maybe he just thought, look, this is the best chance I've got. It's got some snotlings in, um, and he's, you know, it's a tough match versus Cruz. So I imagine Cruz, my Cruz is my pick to win that one. And then we've got a Galentio versus Diomlord. Galentio, of course, beat me in the second round. Uh, not bitter at all. I mean, I'm not. Galentio's a lovely fella. Happy for him to make the tournament with Pro Elves. Pro Elves, not a good choice, by the way. I think they're a poor race choice. I think his skill choices are fine. Tackle, wrestle, couple of dodge. But I just feel like the race is just lacking so much when you compare it to Dark Elves. I just think... Like, he's he's got familiarity with Pro Elves, but honestly, I think it's best to gloss over them a little bit because they're so bad i don't really want to dwell on 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 you know negativity um i think he should should have picked dark elves but look he's qualified he's won all of his games he's in you know they can roll some dice they can get a bit lucky anything can happen in a game of blood bowl and uh oh wait i've put him <laughs> sorry i've just put a diamond there he's not against diamond there are two dios there is diamond and diom lord and he's got um he's got a decent matchup honestly um here it's lizard men who've already lost a game and lizard men it's about 50 50 you know versus not such a good lizard man coach elves are more favored but also they don't have the the thing that was re the elf team that was really favored versus lizard men was wood elves you know just because they had the blodge and the strip ball and stuff without that aspect of ball hawking they're just an armor seven elf team and and honestly they can bully them with their strength and and lizards can deal with this team just fine so i think this is a very tough matchup i think all the matchups are tough for galentio's team um you know no slight against him as a coach but i think he's really going to struggle to get anything going and i'm i will always predict him to lose so yeah dion lord is my pick for that one then we've got kian dare versus strider 
Kiander has come through the losers bracket, famous for goblins in uh, Blood Bowl 2, and he's taking a similarly rubbish team in Blood Bowl 3. He's got Imperial Nobility. This is exactly the team that Artemis considered for Imperial Nobility. 13 players, 2 rerolls, leader thrower, only 4 guard instead of Crucis 6. Swapping the doubles for a block ogre, which is quite like, right? Attrition Blitz, and a normal on the lineman for dirty player. And then he split the blitzers, one dodge to be the carrier, and one tackle to hit things. It's a pretty decent build. Like, I don't hate it. Again, they've got loads of skills. It helps having loads of skills. But, um, the, again, the problem is that just they're not that great, right? They're, they're just not that great a team um, in pure ability. And he's up against one of the absolute best teams, which is Lizardmen. And I've noticed that every single Lizardman team, there were there were loads of teams, 11 Lizardmen team entered. Every single Lizardman team that qualified has had 12 players, two rerolls, a chameleon skink, and six blocks. So I think that's removed all doubt over what the best Lizardman team was. Lizardmen are super strong. They've only really got one bad matchup, which is Underworld. Now, Underworld are the best team. So, you know, <laughs> not enough people are, are familiar with Underworld, though. That's the thing. And Versus a lot of teams, Lizardmen are an absolute juggernaut. So, and you know, <laughs> one of them, one of them is uh, Imperial Nobility. Probably, I don't really know how that this matchup goes. I haven't played them much, but Lizardmen are Lizardmen. Stride is pretty fa pretty famous on tabletop and Fumble. So, I've got to pick Strider to win that one. So, we could have a Lizardman mirror in the second round. That will be fun. <laughs> And then, uh, what's got to be the tie of the round here, really, I think? We have got Artemis versus Andy. Now, now the best part of this match is, of course, they can't both lose. <laughs> both of them famously go out a lot in the first round of tournaments. And uh, ne neither will go out in the first... Well, they, well, not neither. One will go out in the first round. Well, but then they won't go out. They'll have the second chance in the loser's bracket. But one will enter the loser's bracket, guaranteed. But at least they can't both do. Um... So Artemis didn't really like the one-turning aspect of Underworld, and he's gone into the damage aspect, which is the more like high rolly, right? It's less consistent. He, he's going to get more contact. He's going to give more contact, but take more contact. He's really leaned into the fouling with a, a sneaky git Underworld, a dirty player clan rat, wrestle clan rats, um, a block and a tackle. Uh, you know, saving his gutter, no sized up on his gutter, and claw on his roger. So it's a really only four snotlings. I think it's a, honestly, I think it's a bad build. I think he's been coloured by playing ladder too much. I think it's not math style enough. I think Elliot's team is better. I think Artemis doesn't have enough experience with Underworld. And uh, I think he's a great player. Don't get me wrong. I think he's one of the best four players in this tournament. But I think maybe he should have gone something he's more familiar with. And that this was, you know, this was why I didn't go with underworld it's like i you know i'm just not familiar enough with him he he has played them in ladder but ladder is different enough and you know it'll be interesting to see how he plays and uh what happens with artemis there but yeah this was my problem with underworld basically lack of familiarity uh then on the other side he's up against andy davo lots of familiarity with orcs he's gone four guard total again getting the mobile ones and the static ones and the block big so basically exactly what i thought and then uh, rather than a tackle blitzer, he's got a frenzy blitzer, which I quite like, right? It's a pseudo frenzy and a pseudo mighty blow. He'll get more knockdowns um, than a mighty blow guy would have. So even though he's worse on the armor and injury, he'll get more knockdowns and he'll get less knockdowns than the tackle, but it won't ever be dead. Like, you know, say a tackle against dwarves or whatever. So I actually quite like this frenzy blitzer and uh, it's got the troll, no apple. And uh, three rerolls. I, I did actually. I actually prefer the uh, Apo build, but uh, you know, in a lot of t in a lot of games, having this strength five guy with mighty blow is going to help. And he's he's been so lucky in a couple of the games. Uh, and you know, not that he's played badly and had to get lucky, but he's he's had some really crazy games. Uh, the first game he made ten casualties, so uh, he'll be looking. He'll be hoping that his luck continues uh, the way it's been going so far. And I, I mean, that's going to be a super interesting game. I believe that's going to be the first game live cast on the official channel. I'm I'm backing. And honestly, I'm backing Andy Davo to win that game, mostly due to the lack of experience for Atmos and. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're a new team, right? They're a new team to Artemis. He's mostly played Blood Bowl 2. Now he's played Blood Bowl 3. He hasn't played... They've only been out for like three months. And he's probably played them about 50 games or something. He's played a decent amount of games. But I just think, you know, probably not as much as he'd want. And uh, not enough to, you know, call himself an Underworld expert yet. 
Uh, and then the final match, we've got Call Troop versus Plotinus. Call Troop Amazing came through with me from the uh, NAF kickoff event where he beat Lords of Lizard Men. And now he beat Lizard Men again in the uh, he's got through through the winners bracket here in, in this tournament. He beat Lizard Men again to get to get here with only three guard, unbelievable, a mighty blower tackle. Again, I'm not really a fan of the mighty blow when you've already got a big guy and uh, a block throw and a block catcher, 13 players, three rerolls, Apo. I mean, I don't think it's a great team and Honestly, like I'm not being mean. I think he's done amazing to get to get through um, as far as he's got with them. So you know, all credit to him coaching wise, right? Because the, I don't think it's the team that's got him there. Uh, maybe it's been the dice a bit, but it's certainly I don't think it's the team. I don't think humans were a great choice. And he's up against Plotinus with Dwarves. And see, Dwarves are a pretty good choice. Dwarves are good against Underworld, which are the best team. The problem is they're not very good against Lizards, which, you know, are probably the second best team. It's just that Lizards get beaten by the best team. So Lizardmen aren't really a good choice either. So it's it's weird. It, it, a lot of it is gambling on how the format works, works out like the field works out to be, and how the matchups happen. You know, Dwarves are going to be favoured in a lot of these games. But a lot, and you know, in some of them, they're gonna they're gonna feel really bad. This is one where I think they feel pretty good. He's got four guard. He's got a mighty blow slayer, and he's got a block runner. I don't like the block runner when you've got two, because you're not you're not completely reliant on one runner. So I think if you've got one runner, you block him. I think with two, he could have skipped and had a mighty blow tackler or an extra guard. Uh, but look, he's won every game. He's in and he's in the finals. So you know. I th I'm betting on him to win. I'm not that I'm not that sure how good all of these coaches are, you know, like to the fine detail. But obviously they're all good. Look, top sixteen. You're not you're not going to get any bad coaches in here. Everyone's good. There's a few more people, you know, big names that have missed out, like myself, World Sitar, Colian, Seabros, uh, Velihopia, Right? There's a bunch of good guys who could all come in. But look, all these guys are good as well. It's going to be really good. Really excited to see all of these games i will be casting at least the replays of them all on my channel and you know i'll, I'll be publicizing all of the games uh, either the official ones or on my streams and uh, and my, all, all my youtubes uh, uh, at least on replay in the end so there you go should have some special ones as well with guest commentators and stuff should be really cool so i shall see you all there and thanks for watching don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic